Eleanor, did the exorcists know about this when they agreed to help Artorias? They couldn't have. The exorcists I know fought for a world where people could live their lives in happiness and peace. But then how do you explain the fact that the exorcists seem to accept what's going on? Maybe that was just what I wanted to believe. It could be that Inominot's suppression is also affecting the exorcists. You mean, Inominot might have taken control of their will and made them his tools? Completely believable. Exorcists are too hard-headed to be open to much persuasion. If I stayed with the Abbey, I might have accepted this world too. Thank you, Lafayette. It's your strength that protects my heart from wavering. You really think so? Of course I do. Have a little more self-confidence. <laughs> Guess it's a good thing I captured you then. That's true. I owe you my gratitude as well. Thank you. Seriously? Quite. To be able to express what's in my heart is a wonderful thing. You still drive me mad. But I can't disagree there. Even when not yet fully awakened, Inominat can extend his reach to the entire world. The other towns are probably in the same sorry state as the ones we've seen, or perhaps even worse. Magilu, is there some art that can awaken Malakim? What do you mean? Well, if I could just use the flames of purification properly. Even if you could alter reality with that power, you'd end up destroying yourself in the process. Do you want to awaken that badly? I need more power. For Velvet's sake? For her too, but I hate what the Abbey is doing. It's just wrong. This world of theirs is without any joy. I just... want to do everything I can to stop them. This is what I want, with my own free will. And I... I know of no such art. And even if I did, it wouldn't help you. Huh? You've already found strength in your heart. There's no magic that can make that stronger. What you need is to be ready and determined. And to be brave. I guess you're right. Thanks, Maki Lou. No thanks necessary. A hundred gold will cover it. Uh... You want me to pay you? Hey, good advice isn't free. What do I look like, a sidewalk psychiatrist? I'm a witch! She always has to be so difficult. Boil oysters in the cloisters. Oh, got another letter for you, Eisen. Okay. Maybe it's from your sister this time. You want to read it? Me? Uh... Please allow me. Now then. Your cruelty knows no bounds. You bring deep sadness to a fair maiden's heart with each passing day. Repent or else I'll be forced to intervene. This is your final warning. And that's it. 
Wow, this person sounds really mad. Aizen, what did you go and do to make the fair maiden cry? I don't know, but I could try a couple things on you. Ooh, excuse me if I forget to be scared. The letter mentions a fair maiden. Do you think it refers to your sister? What? Oh, you could be onto something. She must be lonely so far away from her brother. It sounded like she's pretty fond of you. Hmm. Are you suggesting that Aizen's sister wrote these letters? I mean, they're certainly unusual, but... My sister wouldn't write something like this. Then maybe it's someone who's spending a lot of time around her. Like, oh, a man whose shoulder she cries on. Damnation, Magilu! My sister doesn't have any guy clinging onto her! Do you know something I don't? Prove it! Bring him here, right now! Calm down, Aizen. No one's saying that. But if you're really that worried, why don't you go see her? <sighs> have you... not done that since you left? I did go back once, a long time ago. But as soon as I showed up, a crowd started to gather. Overcome by malevolence, they turned into demons and attacked my sister then and there. Do you think it's your fault that happened? What do you think? I'd moved us to a safe place, low in malevolence and high up a rugged mountainside. So much for coincidence. I haven't gone back to see her since. Changing topics, I know I said these Nordals were a little off, but I think I'm starting to see that as part of their appeal. Huh? My point is, no matter how odd it might be, any gift could make a girl happy if it's given from the heart. Ha, <laughs> sorry. You can't have one. Show him. That's three Nordals collected, and one to go. Right. Usually that turtle shows up right about now. What gives? Turtles, loiters, embroiders? You mean, the turtles is late because he's taking too much time getting a new design for his robe? I knew you could follow along, my dear little oyster. Should we wait for him a bit longer? I'm sure your sister's reply has to be arriving soon. I don't write her those letters expecting to get a reply. They're more like an apology for not coming home to see her. But you can't go home because of the Reaper's curse, right? So why do you need to send letters and gifts? Soon after I left, my sister wrote me a letter. She said, I don't care if it's dangerous. I want to be with you. Maybe the old me, once I realized there was no fixing this curse, would have gone home prepared to do everything in my power to protect her. But I'm not the old me. Haven't been since I met Eifried and his crew. I understand. You found your place on that ship. Even if you lifted the curse, you wouldn't move back home. Do you think your sister knows that? I haven't told her directly, but I'm sure she's realized it. She's smart, and she's empathetic. 
That's why she never sends me a reply. You mean because she respects that you've chosen your way of life? That's probably how she sees it, yes. But understanding does not preclude loneliness. I think she doesn't reply as a way of showing that she disapproves. And you keep on sending those letters by way of atonement. I don't think it's anything so noble as that, but sure. You're probably not too far off the mark. A brother writing letters knowing he'll never get a reply. And a sister waiting for a brother she knows will never come home. You two make it so damn complicated. Just talk it out face to face and make up already. It's not that hard. <sighs> At least the person you care about is still alive. Velvet. <sighs> Are we done here? Let's go. A sinner and repent to your wicked deeds. Are you talking to me? Yes, you with those eyes that would belong on the Reaper's face. I. Oh? I, I, I'm sorry for bothering you, sir. If you don't have anything you need to confess, sir, that's fine. No, actually, there is one thing I'd like to get off my chest. Of course. Go right on ahead. This all happened a long time ago. But. This turtle's brought over a painting by the master artist Beryl Benito. It was a gorgeous work of art. Too beautiful for words. The price was a little steep, but I couldn't help myself. Only later, I found out it was a total fake. So, you want to repent for letting yourself be guided by worldly desires? No, buying it was my decision. I don't have any regrets. Even if the painting itself was fake, my heartfelt admiration for its beauty was real. What are you going on about? Did you say something? N no, uh, then for what do you wish to repent? The truth is, when I saw that painting, I didn't have enough money on me. So I uh, swiped 100 gold from my little sister's hidden savings. That's uh, the one part I wish I'd done differently. <laughs> I see. Fear not, my son. No matter what the Empyreans may decide, I know your sister would forgive you. I hope so. Come, sinner, and repent your wicked deeds! Do you... mean me? Yes. Or at least I would. But perhaps you're too young to have done anything to repent. Uh, no. There is something. I've kept it a secret so far. But I'll confess it now. And I shall listen, my son. Not too long ago, I found a slug in the forest. And I read in a book that if you sprinkle salt on a slug, it'll shrink. I wanted to try it out for myself. So... So you sprinkled salt on the slug. It's true, that was not a good act. But if the experience taught you to respect life and its fragility, then the slug's sacrifice was not in vain, and... No, that's not what happened! I messed up, and I put sugar on the slug, not salt. And... And then... The sugar attracted a whole bunch of ants to the slug. And they... It was awful! <laughs> I'm so sorry, slug! <laughs> You didn't deserve that. It's okay. I forgive you. It was all a terrible accident. There's... one more thing. 
I wanted to see what would happen if I poured sugar water down an anthill. And... I'm sorry to you too, ants. Kids can sure be weirdly cruel sometimes. Thank you. 